G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now it's spitty time again, yes I know. The Varag's coming, yes I'll have a video out by Christmas for that. But we've got to finish this Spitfire, I've got a group build on. Now um, this is video three, which is kind of miss out of order with what's really gone on. Video one was the unboxing. Video two, unfortunately I jumped into the whole masking the camo thing because everyone asking about it. Then everyone said, how about a complete build video, Harry? Oh dear, okay. So this video, goes back to when I first pulled it out of the box and I'll go through a bit of a slideshow and I'll talk over it and tell you all the steps I went through and all the changes I made and the things I added and what I did. It was quite a lot that went on because it was only going to be a simple build. It's a lovely kit though, like this um, Academy, right? Spitty only picked it up for a couple of shekels. It wasn't much at all. It was just, oh, I haven't built a Spitfire in 50 years. I think I'll have a go at it. And this one was in my club and um, Shane, Shane, the club, you know, Shane? Probably watching, maybe you're not, I don't know. Have you got Have you got internet, Shane? The old bastard. <laughs> we'll get clobbered for that. But Shane at Riverside Scale Modelers, he had, he had this kit. He said, Harry, you'll have no trouble with it. Goes together like a dream. And he was not kidding. This kit, I could have built it without any filler if I'd um, been a little more careful with my, with my sprueing and joining. Because basically I only ended up putting a tiny, tiny bit under the bottom of fuselage, which were hairline bits. Uh, hairline joints, right? And the um, the one wing root, I think it was the port side wing root at the front. Uh, that time, I could have painted over it, quite frankly. But I put the tiny bit in. I've just got this water-based um, sort of, um, I think it's a, uh, a marble filler, for fine marble dust. And you put that in and you can rub it with your bloody finger and you, you don't have to sand it. You just sort of wipe off all the excess. You use like a poof tank in there. And that was it. I think I might have, because I had the filler out, the little roots on the tail, put them in, but you didn't need to. It's a great little kit. Considering how old it is, it goes together like a dream. It's a joy. It's missing a lot of detail, sure, but you can add that to it. As you'll see, I've done quite a bit of stuff to it. But um, I cannot highly recommend this. Now, if you just want a quick, easy, fun Spitfire build, and um, you'll see my result, first bidding in 50 years, I'm over the moon with it. Okay, so enough waffling, enough of that. Let's get on, I'll take you back in time <laughs> to when I first started this kit, which was only a couple of months ago. I've only been working on it a couple of months. All right, here we go. And I started about two months ago. First thing I did was use my Steiner Res Green Primer uh, to do the interior parts. Now it was close enough at the time to interior green to get started. Anyway, you don't see a lot of the interior once it's buttoned up. Now, one of the first things I did after that um, primer dried was to add my um, some washes and to start doing a little bit of dry brushing to bring out that instrument brinicle. That was all coming up quite nice. In fact, there was quite a lot of detail in this kit for the little amount, you know, the few parts that it had. So I painted all the parts that I needed up on the sprue there, which was an easy way for me to get them all done nicely. And then the assembly went together like a dream. That was the fastest assembling interior I've ever done. Very happy with that. Very, very happy. But once she's buttoned up, as I said, you don't get to see much. But I know it's there. I know I've done it. I've got the photographs to prove it. So once I basically got all those pieces together, there were a few sort of knobs to paint and things like that. But I needed to move on and decide what else I want to do with this interior. And I decided at this stage um, what I really wanted to do was improve the seatbelts because the kit just came with some decal seatbelts and I did not like them at all. So I got these lovely Edward um, Superfiber ones. And they're terrific, they're just like stickers, but it's actually fibre you pick up off the um, cardboard and then you can wrap them around and position them wherever you like. You get them done in about five minutes, they're absolutely brilliant. And I think they look, they really look the part. No mucking around with pee or anything like that, you just put them straight in. But I found there was a little problem with the kit, there was a missing bar behind the um, pilot where the seatbelt was actually supposed to go through the back of his um, chair in that bulkhead there and attach up. So I had to get a bit of evergreen sprue, put that in and extend my belt through there. No problem at all, that was an easy scratch. Next on the propellers and I did the um, trick that my friend um, Aaron had suggested in that I sprayed the tips yellow first and then I basically masked them off and painted all the blades black, which is kind of obvious, but I always seem to do it the other way. But anyway, they come up beautifully when you do it that way. Yellow first, black second, you, you can't go wrong. And um, the spinner was done in the sky grey-green colour, which is typical of RAF. So that looked really good. Very happy with that. Now, at this point, I picked up Ataka paints, and they were fantastic. My friend Aaron also suggested them. Brilliant to airbrush. You don't really need any thinner or just the tiniest bit in the cup to get it going. And there I'm testing the interior green, and it is terrific. Really sold on these Ataka paints. I used them from then on, painting everything on this kit. And I redid the interior wheel wells there. 
uh, wheel wells, yes, uh, with the interior green to see how it looks, but they're basically all gonna cover it up anyway because I'm going wheels up. Yes, more of that later. But um, I also painted in where the machine guns are with the interior green to see how it looks. Machine guns are pretty ordinary, there's not much detail in them, but I went and did it anyway. There's the um, the green after it's dried, and it is a bloody good match. In fact, my friend Aaron had always used a Humbrol interior green before then, he said it was the one, but we're both convinced that this um, this Ataka green is pretty damn good. And you can see the panel lines there too on the underside part. That's just been primed in Steiner Res Grey and then painted in the, um, basically the um, medium sea grey. And all those panel lines just popped out by themselves. I mean, you hardly need to wash it. Now on with the wings, they fitted perfectly. The wing roots didn't need any cleaning up. Slit snapped right in, click, click. Put the tips on, they fitted perfectly too. There was so little fiddling or adjustment with this. Everything went together so well. So there it is, traditional uh, shape. Started putting the radiators and the air scoop on. Now there's a test fit of the canopy and the plastic machine guns in the kit. And that all looked um, quite fine and I thought this is all good. Then I realized I'm going wheels up. I'm gonna to have to put something inside that cockpit. And that something is a pilot, which I stole from a Hawker Fury kit that I have because I didn't really need a pilot for that. So he got some Steiner Res Blue. Yes, yeah, Steiner Res now comes in blue. He got Steiner Res Blue so that I could paint him up in all the colors that traditionally those RAF pilots are. And there he is. I'm not the best uh, figure painter in the world, but he's okay for what I need inside that cockpit. He'll do, he'll be fine. You know, I just use the basic colors and chuck to wash. Now here, I found some brass machine guns for the Smitty. Yes, heaps better than the plastic parts, and there they are going in. Now I've put brass barrels on my ships and I put them on my tanks, but I've never ever done that with an aircraft, but there they are, they were beautiful. Half a shekel, how could you go wrong? They look gorgeous, absolutely. So I'm um, very happy with those. The next thing I needed to do was mask that canopy, and I had an Edward mask for that. Wasn't gonna do it all myself this time. And it was pretty easy. It was quite obvious from the instructions what to do. And I started by pulling away the parts I wasn't going to use to expose on the card there the um, the parts that I would be, the little mask. And that went on so quickly, I think I did the whole thing about half an hour. It was the easiest masking of a canopy I have done in my life. So there we go, I had to um, mask the little wheel rolls. I did that just with a little bit of painter's tape that I had. I didn't mind doing that. Now, first thing, on with some interior green um, over the top of the mask because I want the inside of the canopy um, bars there to be green. Over the top with Steiner Res Metal. Yes, that's a primer and it's metallic. How about that? And of course, the next bit that I need to do has been seen in the last video is that I worked out the masks that I needed to do that whole camouflage. So if you haven't seen it, go back and see part two, which is actually this bit here. I know it's all a bit out of whack, all mixed up, just like me. So there's a drawing you might not have seen in the last video where I actually worked out all the shapes. And then I've used my Tamiya Bendy tape there to mask the um, two little yellow strips that sit on the front of the plane. And um, masked out the bottom, make sure I don't get it all over my lovely gray. And you can see a couple of spots there where I've used some filler actually, and that uh, was the only spot I needed filler. So there, they go, go all sprayed up, the um, invasion stripes are on, my little yellow strips are on. That was looking terrific. The bottom of the plane was basically done, bar a wash and a little bit of weathering. But I needed to mask that up now because I'm going to go to the top side and um, spray the darker grey and the green on, and there's a little mask. Now if you haven't seen it, go back and watch the video where I go into great detail on how to do the masking and make the whole camo thing up, because it's quite an interesting um, system, and it does get a fantastic result, as you'll see shortly. So there, there's all the masks over the top of the gray, and then I had to get the green out, the dark green color, and that then went over the top of my masks. All looks like a great big mess at the moment, but then you peel it away, and then suddenly, ba there you go, it's not bad. A little bit of touching up, especially where the wings touch the fuselage. One of the other things I, I uh, improved were the exhausts because I didn't like the kit parts which were just solid. So I drilled out the little exhaust um, ports there and then I painted them up and I weathered them, dry brushed them and you'll see more of those later. Now I did have some green leak <laughs> and from the painting of the top mask and I had to respray those bloody Bajan stripes. Then I started making a stand and my friend Becker had given me a clear tube and a little base which I painted blue and look at that, when you put the Spitfire on it, it almost looks like it's floating in the air. And there I've um, touched up those, um, those masks as well and there's some more of that stand. Stands pretty, pretty smithy. I've since got a little, um, the part that clicks in the bottom there, that's a short stand I use for putting it away in its lunch box at night time, uh, keep the dust off the spitty. 
Now, um, moving right along, I uh, decals. Decals needed doing, yes. So um, here's where the cock-up started because I used my tank water, not thinking. And my tank has got rat poison, it's got um, bloody asbestos, and it's got uh, all kinds of crap in there. But anyway, halfway through I realized, switched to um, basically on drinking spring water, and then the decals went on without a drama. Finally, after that had been allowed for a day to dry, I um, just ran a light brown wash over the top, just uh, to see how it all looked, and that meant that I could finally Peel the mask off that canopy. See how she looks. And boy, it's starting to come together. It's nearly there. I was so happy. And um, that stand as well makes it sort of float in the air and look like it's flying. And then she went into my display cabinet and I was pretty pleased. So there you have it. That's the build up to date. And here she is, right? After all that hard work, don't knock it over, bloody Harry, you idiot. So there she is. I mean, I've still got to get a flat coat on it. Um, I still want to put some streaks from the exhaust. Um, I've, I've got to get a, a wash underneath. I mean, the panel line's sharp anyway, this thing. You know, they're, they're quite deep. But I don't mind it because they're really they're sharp without even doing a wash. So um, she's she's just about there. Uh, but I want to take my time and get it right. And with Christmas everything in the way, I thought I'll get this video out now. Because it's about the only thing I've got to show you this week. Because this is all I've been working on. Oh, that and a bloody walrus, but that's another story. Uh, so there's a Spitfire, she is 99% there, I've just got to add a few little things to her. So I'm pretty happy with that, pretty pretty happy to, considering I had a bit of drama there with the decals, that was my own fault, trying to use bloody um, contaminated water that has asbestos, rat poison, and um, some green gunk we still haven't identified, so only pure spring water in my decal solution from now on. Now look, this won't be the last Spitfire I'm going to build, if you have a look behind me, have you noticed? There's, there's a, there's a, I can't get my fingers right. There's a Spitty there with floats. There's a lovely Tamiya 132nd. There's a brace of um, one, a couple more 148s like this one. And there's even another 132nd Type 2 or Mark 2 Spitty there. I have gone Spitty crazy. I have even got a tiny little 172nd um, Spit Pro. I might try and sneak a pick on here. That's a wonderful little kit. And it had more, well, this has more parts in it. There's this little 172nd. The My Academy kit, I kid you not. Plus photo etch and resin and all kinds of things. That's going to be a lovely little thing. I might build that in the new year. But, oh, I won't say it'll be a quick one because really, it's quite a lot to do, even though it's so tiny. Anyhow, <clears throat> oh dear, I need some of my banana smoothie. I'm, I'm getting so excited thinking about Spitfires. Ah, can't beat a banana smoothie now. Where were we? Um, quick, quick, uh, Q, 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 line, line. <laughs> Spitfires, mate. Guys, it's been 50 years I built my first kit was an Airfix Spitfire out of a bag. First one that I ever bought. Bought it from bloody news agent. A news agent in Kalamunda, Western Australia where we were living. I walked down the news agent, you know. You usually go down there to try and steal a couple of dirty booby magazines, you know, as you do when you're just a little young whippersnapper. And, um, no, I didn't. <laughs> and uh, gloss over that. Just edit that bit out. Uh, no, I went down Blythe's news agency in Kalamunda. I mean, it was a tiny little town. It was like a little arty farty sort of place, you know. This little art space up on the hills of from Perth in Western Australia. And um, I'd often go to the news agent there after school. We'd, we'd all wander down, and mates and I, and we'd flick through a few of the engineering magazines. <clears throat> and uh, they had this new thing. They had this thing, Airfix. There were bags, right? Actual bags hanging on a bloody rack. And uh, there was a Spitfire. Right? <gasps> and I think the Battle of Britain movie had just been out. It was around that period. And I was really excited. I had some donkey kits or dinky donkey, whatever, Tommy, I don't know, metal kits of Spitfires and, and Heinkels and things like that. And I thought, this looks this looks good. Because I I built balsa planes, built lots of them. That's where I was building first. I was building lots of balsa planes. I used to put motors in the fly. I even built a balsa Spitfire. So anyhow, I um, I really loved this. And it was a dollar. And my pocket money at that stage was 20 cents a week for doing my chores. So I put my pocket money down on lay-by. Do you still have lay-by? Didn't have bloody credit cards then. Put my 20 cents down. I had to put 20 cents on every week for five weeks. And I did that. So for a month, brought my pocket money. And eventually I paid off my $1 Spitfire kit. Which was pretty expensive in those days. Yes, I'm very old. And uh, took it home. So excited because it came with the glue and everything. And I smeared glue from ass to bloody end. The ears all over it. <laughs> And I had a ball. It was fantastic. I don't even think I had a knife. I think I just ripped all the parts of the screw and put it together. 
Well, I've come a bit of a way since then. <laughs> Hopefully this one's a bit of an improvement on that very first Spitfire, but that got me started and I was hooked after that. I love that. I might have built some other Spitfires that same year and I think I built everything my news agent had. And then for all my Christmas and birthday presents, I'd get my dad to go down to the big hobby shop in Perth and um, he'd bring me home, you know, battleships and all kinds of stuff. It started my whole um, modelling sort of career. Well, modelling hobby, yes, career. It's not a career, I don't make any money out of it. This is all free! Yes, you bastards, you don't pay for any of this. I'm on here, slaving my guts out. <laughs> Look, if you enjoy my channel, that's all the reward I need. Yes, just, just put on the comments. Harry, we love you. We wish we could pay you. <laughs> all right, back to Spitfires, right, okay. Um, this isn't finished, but it's so damn close. And what I'll do is I'll give you a bit more in this video. We'll end now. I'll do a little montage of photographs that I just took on white background. And it came up pretty good. I mean, this thing hardly needs any more work. I mean, I'll leave it pretty clean anyway, because um, we talked about uh, hairspray and chipping down aluminium. There's a few problems doing that if A, you leave it three or four days, and B, Hataka paint doesn't chip to hairspray. I know, I was surprised too. I'm gonna to investigate that more because Hitaka has its own special chipping solution. So I'm gonna get that and try that out another kit. Hmm, something new. Either I've totally cocked up or there's just a special form on this, but Hitaka has its own, it's called a removing solution. So we'll we'll see what that's all about and I'll explore that later. See if it's my cock up, which invariably it is, or um, there's another technique to learn. How about that? But I'm loving this Hitaka paint, that's for sure. That's, that's all Hitaka on it there. It's just absolutely lovely. All right, that's enough of that. All we want to do now is see the Spitfire as she flies out. So, wearing my Royal Flying Doctor's hat, which I thought was rather appropriate for this video, <laughs> I'll um, do my traditional goodbyes and say goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Hedini. <laughs>